Hello, I'm Ryan Pilgrim, and welcome to another edition of Campus Connection. Coming up, we'll have the results of county elections, and Brittany Robinson will be talking about charity for the holidays. As you know, last Tuesday was election day. Our cameras followed Dylan, Chuck, and Michael as they went to vote. Thanks, Ryan. I'm Dylan Huffman, and I'm here at First United Methodist Church in Forest City. I'm about to go vote, and then I'm going to give you the results of the Forest City elections. And now we're going to send you over to Chuck in Spindale. Thanks, Dylan. I'm here at the Spindale House in Spindale, and I'm about to go vote. And later, I'll give you the results for the elections here in Spindale. Now on to Michael in Rutherfordton. Thanks, Chuck. I'm here in Rutherfordton getting ready to vote, and I will bring you all your updates on the results from the Rutherfordton polls. This year's election marked the first time in eight years that the Republicans won control of both the House of Representatives and the Senate. In the race for the Clerk of Court, the winner was Steve Owens. For the County Commissioner race, in District 1, the winner was Brian King. In District 4, Michael J. Benfield comes out on top. Alan Tony won District 5. Chris Francis was re-elected sheriff. Our new soil and water conservation supervisor is Shannon Buckley. And finally, NC House District 111, Mike Hager gets the victory. Steve Vicendek, a basketball great from Duke University, made it to the pros. He is the man behind landing the head coach position for Coach K. He was first, he was at the Foundation Center on campus giving advice on leadership and how a commitment to excellence can help students achieve their goals. Well, this week's student profile is none other than our very own SGA President, Sarah Rodriguez. Not only is she a hardworking student taking on a full course load, but she still manages to take on a whole lot more. Take a look. I'm in the work study program, um, and I'm actually the president of SGA. Um, pretty much what I do is I represent the student body. I represent all of you students, and um, I'll answer any questions that you got. I uh, represent you in committees, and I um, go to conferences and things like that, and I get, um, I get to voice, be the voice for you guys and um, tell my opinions on what I think could make the college a little bit better for you students. Have you been to any plays here at ICC lately? If so, you may recognize Sarah as one of the Von Trapp children in The Sound of Music. If you've never seen it, there's seven children, um, and I was the oldest in the Von Trapp family, uh, so that was really fun. It was like big Broadway musical down at the foundation. And what exactly is this talented, driven young lady's plans for the future? What I'm hoping to do as soon as I get out of ICC, I'm hoping to get into the RN program. Um, and if I can graduate from there, I'm hoping to go on to uh, Gardner-Webb and get my BSN in nursing. Um, and then from there, I would like to uh, either get some experience working in a hospital or um, there's a, an organization down in Swaziland, Africa, and they they have a whole outreach center there and they what they do is they remove um, like tumors and they perform surgeries and uh, help a lot of the people down there so I'd really really like to get involved in that uh, so that's what I'm hoping to do uh, as soon as I get out of here. If you know of an undergraduate that embodies the isothermal community college spirit we want to meet them. We're asking faculty and staff to nominate students for the weekly profile and let us tell their story. Email your nominations to icc.campusconnection at gmail.com well, the holiday season is quickly approaching, and that means it's time to give thanks. We sent our cameras to ask students around campus what they do to volunteer or donate for the holiday season. Uh, I'm going to give money to the local charities around, around our community. And I'm going to give money and blankets and stuff to my church to go to the Grace of God Rescue Mission in our county. I'll probably donate some money if to certain charities but I wouldn't say anything extensive I'll probably donate a time if I get the time I'll probably do some help with my church and uh, they usually do some suppers and for the uh, people who can't afford anything during the holidays and 
donate canned foods and presents for kids during Christmas. So I contribute to St. Jude's every month, but on holidays I send just a little bit extra. I don't plan on doing no voluntary work, but I plan on doing voluntary vote donations. At Walmart, I'm donating Salvation Army. Um, what I plan to do is make sure my kids have a good Christmas. Me, on the other hand, I'm old. I'm not ready for no presents. I, I don't baby myself, so donate to donate, donate dollar, fifty cent, whatever. There's other kids out there that need help. Don't think about yourself for the holidays. Think about other people, other people, kids' situations. Well, hey, we can be in worse situations. Donate, donate. We all feel a little bit better about ourselves when we help out and do what we can to make even the slightest difference in someone's life during the holidays. There are ways in which you can make the difference for someone. One business that could use your help this season, Yokefella, receives donations of clothes and more and are short on volunteers. They need volunteers to sort through and organize items to be on Yokefella shelves. Yokefella does their best to try and pair volunteers willing to lend a helping hand with areas of interest to those volunteers. Yokefella is even in need of flower arrangers. Yokefella is located at 1232 Blanton Street in Spindale. Another is New Beginning Soup Kitchen who needs help serving meals to those who without a meal could go hungry this holiday season. They operate every Thursday from 4.30 to 6 serving takeout. They also have deliveries delivering meals to those unable to drive. New Beginning Soup Kitchen is held at the O Motel 638 North Washington Street in Rutherford across from Go Forth Pest Control. Coming up after the break, we'll have a look on what's going around, going on around county. Learn about an exciting new club that might be coming to ICC and learn about an organization that might not have known was in our area. All that and more. Stay tuned. As we at Isothermo Community College approach our 50th anniversary, we celebrate the privilege of serving Rutherford and Polk Counties. ICC offers associate degrees in the arts and sciences and in many disciplines of technology. Isothermo is home to the Foundation Performing Arts Conference Center. The college owns and operates WNCW, an award-winning public radio station. ICC is a continual catalyst for creativity, economic development, and community growth. Welcome to the Foundation. You may think I'm talking about this building, but I'm talking about this entire college because Isothermal Community College is a foundation. It's a foundation for welders, a foundation for hairstylists, a foundation for law enforcement, and it's a foundation for broadcasters. ICC is a foundation for the community to build their lives upon. So thank you for supporting our foundation. One thing that Rutherford County can't get enough of is high school football. With the season fixing to reach a close and local teams are trying to prove their dominance, our cameras were there for the, all the action under the Friday night lights. Cavaliers finished the season 6-5 with a playoff clinching win Friday night versus Chase. East travels to Mount Pleasant for the first round of the playoffs Friday night. Our Central ended up 7-4 on the season, beating Burns 19-14 Friday. The Hilltoppers traveled to Bandy's this weekend and are ready for playoff action. Thomas Jefferson played Highland Tech this past Friday, getting the win 60-22. The Griffins are 8-3 with a number two seed in the state playoffs. They play South Stanley at home Friday night. Chase's terrible season finally came to an end. Trojan finished 1-10 on the season. They are now looking forward to the rest in the off season. For a look on what's going on around the county, here's Dylan Huffman with this week's county wrap up. With election day last week, the towns of Forest City, Spindale, and Rutherfordton could be undergoing some changes. We have big news for Isothermal Community College. The county commissioners approved a grant that will give up to $3 million to construct a new applied sciences center on campus. We hope to have some info soon on some of the other buildings on campus that need repair. Rutherford County Board of Commissioners meeting was last Tuesday, November the 3rd. This was a closed session, however, tax refunds and releases were discussed. Well, that's an overview of what your local elected officials are working on around the county. For Campus Connection, I'm Dylan Huffman. For a look at what's going on around Isothermal this week, here's Charles Harrison. Hello, I'm Charles Harrison with a look at what's going on around campus. Don't miss Isothermal's Bowling Night at Autumn Lanes, November the 18th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. The cost is just $9.50 and includes two hours of bowling, 
shoes, and two slices of pizza and medium drinks. This offer is available to Isothermal Community College students, faculty, and staff, plus family members. But remember, you'll need a current Isothermal Community College ID to receive the discount. Are you ready for another round of presidential ping pong? Challenge ICC President Dalton on November the 18th at noon in the gym. In order to participate, you must be a currently enrolled curriculum student and be nominated by an instructor. If you need more information, contact Ruth Kono. Give the gift of life this holiday season by donating blood on December the 3rd. The Red Cross, in cooperation with SGA, will hold a blood drive from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the Student Center Gym. The National Society of Leadership and Success induction ceremony will take place on December the 9th at 5.30 p.m. in the Student Center lobby. The annual SGA Holiday Social will take place December the 10th from 12 to 2 p.m. in the Student Center lobby. And finally, don't forget, the Foothills Nursing Consortium RN deadline is Wednesday, January the 21st of next year. For more information, contact Tina Porter. Also, there's still some time to enroll for licensed practical nursing. The deadline is April the 23rd of next year. Contact Tina Porter for information on this as well. Well, reporting for Campus Connection, I'm Charles Harrison. For a look at your five-day forecast, here's Mr. Weather himself, Ben Worthington. Hello, I'm Mr. Weather, Ben Worthington. Let's take a look at your local weather. Wednesday will be mostly sunny, the high around 69. Slight winds around 5 to 7 miles per hour in the afternoon. Wednesday night, we're looking at the low around 44 with the possibility of rain showers after 2 a.m. Thursday, mostly cloudy, the high around 51. Remaining mostly cloudy Thursday night, the low at 31. Friday, mostly sunny, the high at 45, the low around 28. Into the weekend, we see Saturday has a high of 48 with a low of 31. And finally, Sunday with a chance of rain and snow showers, with the chance of participation being around 50%. Mostly cloudy, the high near 47. Ryan, back to you in the studio. Are you interested in acting? Do you wish that Isothermal had a drama club? Well, you may be in luck. Shelby Cash has been trying to get a drama club started here at ICC. Here she is to tell you a little bit more about it. Well, I'm trying to start the drama club so we can have more of a family within our school because a lot of kids are a little too scared to go into broadcasting like me. And in high school, we were part of a, either a thespian society or just or did plays for fun or did plays in our community. And I just wanted to have that sense of community in our school. Well, in a drama club, you'll learn how to act, ad lib acting, uh, reading, cold readings. And in our drama club, we just have fun. We'd write our own plays and try to perform for events that we'll have here at the Isthmal College. We will have the club started as soon as we get signed off by the president. After that's done, our first meeting is either going to be on the following Tuesday or Thursday, whichever one comes first. Once I get it, official. I will have flyers up with my information on it and if you do want to join you can always email me at cshelby7315 at student.isothermal.edu. I bet you didn't know that Rutherford County has a local beekeepers association. Well we sent Dylan Huffman out to learn about it. Thanks Ryan. I'm here today to learn all about the Rutherford County Beekeepers Association and what it is that makes bees so special. Currently, my role with the Rufford County Beekeepers is president. I like to think of myself as uh, the Joe Biden of the Bee Club. We get together the uh, third Tuesday night of every month at uh, 6 p.m. Well, the Rufford County Beekeepers' mission is to educate people on the proper way to keep bees and then educate the public on, uh, you know, uh, what bees do for them, what the benefits of bees are. Talk about what's happening at the state level of the bee association our rutherford county uh beekeepers association is a uh, one of the chapters uh front we're a smaller unit of the state one of every three bites of food that a person takes is uh, pollinated by a bee so bees are really important to our agriculture uh, 
uh, of our county. What to do or not do to uh, help or not hurt the bees, you know? Uh, we take care of bees by making sure that they have the food that they need to survive the winter. You know, if you believe in evolution, which is hard to deny if you're a beekeeper. Pollinating strawberries and apples and peaches and all the things that uh, the folks of Rutherford County eat. But actually, honeybees were not the first um, type of bee that were here. Just take a look at this apple and you ask, why is this apple not symmetrical? You see this side of the apple is uh, a little misformed. Uh, this side of the apple didn't get pollinated as well as this side did. That's exactly why that apple is that shape. So a world with no apples or very few apples, no uh, cucumbers or strawberries or peaches or a lot of the vegetables that you eat, uh, that's what the world would be like without uh, bees. Uh. Well, I hope you learned something interesting today. I know I sure did. Reporting for Campus Connection, I'm Dylan Mm-hmm. Well, I think I'm going to have to start raising bees now. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of Campus Connection. I'm Ryan Pilgrim. For all those service members watching us this week and locking it down overseas, thank you. And we leave you today with some beautiful shots of the town of Rutherford.